Welcome to the Level Up English podcast, the best place to come to practice the English language, learn about the British accent and culture. With me, your host, Michael Lavers. Hello, English learners, and welcome back to the Level Up English podcast. I am excited to be joined today by a special, special guest. So we're joined today by Zdenek from Zdenek's English podcast or Teacher Zdenek on social media. I'll put his name on the screen here so you can see how it's spelt if you want to search for him more. But I'm sure by the end of the episode, you will want to know more about him. So these days I'm having more and more kind of casual chats on the podcast where, you know, maybe towards the beginning of this podcast, uh, towards the beginning of Level Up English, I was having more specific topics about learning English and language topics. And these days it's much more ca- much more casual and much more conversational. And I have had many requests to do this. So I hope you enjoy this one because we talk very... We talk in a very laid back way, but also use lots of amazing expressions as well. Teacher Stenek is really, really good at using so many amazing English idioms and expressions. So listen out for them today. If you do have any problems keeping up with our conversation, remember I do a lot of work to make transcripts for every single episode, including this one. So if you want to see the transcript where you can see, you know, what each of us is saying, it highlights the word as we're saying it, and you can even search for words. So if you heard something that you want to, you know, go back and search for later, you can just click Control F on your computer or whatever platform you're using, type in the word, and it will show you that word in the podcast and the time and everything like that. It's really, really, really useful. So if you want to check out the transcript, you can go to levelupenglish.school and then click on the members button or just go directly in the link in the show notes of this episode. So Teacher Zdenek is originally from the Czech Republic and he is a highly qualified and experienced English teacher. And that will really show in our conversation today. I really hope you enjoy it. We, we start by talking a little bit about his interests, which include football and learning with board games. And then we go on to talking about memories and experiences. So I ask Zdenek about the riskiest things he's done, maybe the most embarrassing moments of his life and we kind of share some funny stories in these areas and then on the bonus podcast today the members podcast we go into this topic in more detail where we talk about something difficult we've overcome before a time in the past that we are nostalgic for and much much more so I really hope you enjoy this one I'm gonna stop introing now and let you get right into it so I hope you enjoy it And if you do, let me know. I love to hear your feedback. Hello, English learners. Welcome back to the podcast. I am very happy to be joined today by Zdenek. Did I get your name okay? Yes. Cool. That, that's a big relief for me. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here, Michael. It's a pleasure to have you here. So thank you very much for, for being on the podcast. Maybe could you give a quick introduction as to who you are, uh, where you're from, and maybe a little bit about what you do as well. Mm -hmm. So as we have already established, I'm, I'm Zdenek. <laughs> nice to meet you all. I'm from the Czech Republic and I am an English teacher like yourself. So we happen to be colleagues. And I also have a podcast like you and a YouTube channel. Definitely not, not as famous as yours, but um, I try to keep it going. And um, yeah, um, these days I work as a self-employed English teacher, even, even though most of my career I have worked for different, different kind of schools. 
yeah, my hobbies or my interests are mainly football, board games, running, um, games in general, I guess, TV shows, I guess, just like any other person. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I like your hobbies, by the way. You've got a few interesting ones, which we can come back to in a minute. Are, are you in Prague now then, or somewhere else? Um, not really. I was born there, but um, since I since I turned about 19, I've been I've been outside Prague. Yeah, it, there's, a, there's a little town called Podjebrady, about 50 kilometers east of Prague. That's mm -hmm. That's where I am at the moment. Nice, probably much more peaceful and not so many tourists, which would be nice. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned your podcast. So I, mm. I think if I checked correctly, you've been going for almost like a decade now. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Wow. I How guess, I guess I should be very professional by now, but it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you can ever get to that point. Like I've been going a few years, but I feel like more and more casual every day, every week, you know, <laughs> it could be a good thing, right? Maybe we are more authentic, more yeah. real. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Well, what do you tend to focus on in your episodes? Like what are the topics you like to look at? Um, it's, I always say it's a bit of a mixed bag. <laughs> it's a hodgepodge. It's everything. <laughs> it's a misc miscellaneous stuff. Um, pretty much any, any kind of topic. So I'm going to invite you onto my podcast here. Yeah? We are about to record it. And I told you it doesn't really matter what we talk about there. So I asked you about what your interests are. And actually what I find is that um, the more niche or the more unique the topic is, the better for some reason. Maybe I have done too many generic episodes, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, a lot of, lot of different topics. Sometimes I record just by myself, but most of the episodes are interviews with guests like yourself, other English teachers from England, from any place, really, you know, not just from England, from Europe, Asians, South Americans, Africans, you name it. Yeah, it's nice to have all these different cultures and have them each represented as well. But I, I think it's very similar to my podcast where I started off more focused on like one topic of like language learning. And now I've kind of, it's a bit more random as we yeah. might see today. So yeah, we'll see how this goes, but I've got a few questions for you. So yeah, I wanted to ask about your hobbies a bit more. Football mm -hmm. is one that you said you like, and I'm afraid that I'm not, I'm not really into football. So oh no, I, I guess we can't <laughs> talk for long about this, but I know a lot of listeners will be, and mm -hmm. they would want me to ask you about it. So I don't know what got you interested in football. I, I don't know. Maybe you could try to explain to me as like a non football fan why you like it if that's possible um yeah it's it's one of those things that sort of happens when you're very young <laughs> and you start playing with your with your classmates at a very early age at an elementary school and then you realize this is what you love the most and then obviously it's very popular here in my country as much as it, as it is in yours in your country it's even more popular i would say mm. But it's just like if everyone does it and you find that you are not, let's say, not the worst, you are, I'm, I wouldn't say I am, I am super good, but you can, you can kick the football, as we say, uh, then you're like, oh, I quite enjoy this. So I've always done that as, as a young kid and then started playing for a team as well, never professionally, but uh, competitively. Yeah, so I, I was registered, um, played for uh, several clubs. And it's been my passion my entire life, pretty much. Yeah. Now, now that I hung up my boots, which I did last year, I still, I still, of course, watch football. And I, mm. I would go as far as to say that I can't live without it. <laughs> Amazing. I, I mean, even if it's not my passion, I'm always so excited when other people have passions. Like, I think it's really good to have something yeah. that that um, gives your life more purpose and meaning. Um, and that's a good expression you used as well, hung up your boots. So kind yeah. of like stopped, retired from an activity. Is that what you Retired, what you yeah, I, reti I retired. Mm. Um, is oh. that permanently? Um, I hope so. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, okay. Yeah, because when you play at this level, <laughs> um, at village level, let's say, 
Uh, what happens is that occasionally the, the team doesn't have enough players to play their match. Especially these days, I believe it's, it's, it's harder and harder for clubs to keep players. Mm. So occasionally they, they will call you. Uh, Zdenek, we are so desperate. I know you have stopped playing, but we are, there are just 10 of us. There's just nine of us. We need players. Can you please play? It's okay if you just stand there. You don't even have to run. <laughs> <laughs> and then you you kind of give in because the thing is, like, when I stopped playing, my my heart wanted to keep going. And there are a lot of players who play at even older age than than mine. Mm -hmm. But my my brain finally finally realized that I can't. I can't keep going. Yeah, my body, my body is saying no. Um, so, the let's say the, I was more rational this time, and but I have done this a few times already. But this time it feels a bit different. This time it feels like it's for good, and I hope mm. it will be. It will stay that way. <laughs> okay, interesting. That's, I mean, it's really important to listen to your body, isn't it, and not let. Yeah whatever if it's ego or something get in the way and make you keep doing something in this case it's heart yeah your heart because it's just a passion something you mm -hmm. just it's 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 something that keeps you going it's it's something that pretty much affects your mood and your mental health in a way yeah because now that i gave gave it up or now that i stopped playing i had really harsh winter because it's just felt weird and you know i wouldn't say i was suffering from depression but I, let's say i had some mood swings because of it because mm -hmm. i was missing something yeah in my head i was like what am i gonna do now so you have to find something else yeah <laughs> so yeah something to fill the void for that yeah exactly okay and the other thing i wanted to touch on was board games yep. which i know you speak about a lot and um this is also on your website. Uh, you you mentioned you teach English through board games. Is that right? Yeah. Well, so ever since I graduated from from the university, yeah, I I was always looking for ways to sort of implement my own passions into teaching. Because as a teacher, I wanna I want to motivate myself to I want to keep keep that focus. I want to enjoy myself because I believe if, if a teacher is happy, that, that, that will be kind of passed on to the students as well. And it's, it's really, it's really important, this kind of mental hygiene. So for me, it's, I want to be allowed to be creative in my job. Yeah. So I was lucky enough to have a lot of opportunities, whoever I worked for more or less, they gave me some kind of freedom in the way I taught my lessons and uh, of course, I follow the guidelines as well. Of course, I follow the met methodology and um, it's all communicative and um, learner centered and everything, you know, but I try to throw in a few ideas. So one of them was board games because I've always loved games. So you can see behind me if you're watching the video, <laughs> I've got a lot of games there. Um, so I started using games in my classes. So I had to go for games that would be sort of suitable for that. Yeah. So we could, because not every single game has what it takes uh, to, to be suitable for, for learning English in, in this case. Yeah. So uh, let's say chess uh, is a fantastic game, but you don't really get to talk much during it. Or maybe you do, but I don't think it's desirable. It might be even detrimental. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You might learn the word checkmate, but that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's so fascinating. I, I, I totally love the idea of embracing your interests and passions, because I think as a teacher, your competitive advantage is your uniqueness, isn't it? Yeah. If you try to be the same as everyone else, then you've got thousands, millions of other teachers to compete with, but there's only one, one of you, right. And one of you who has your interests and passions. Exactly. So that, that's really exciting. It's, yeah, I, I might think about doing that in my language learning too. I wonder how many board games I can find in other languages that could be could be fun. Um, and I, I guess, do you do that in like group lessons or how, how does it normally, or is it one-to-one? -one? Um, how does it come up in your classes? 
So whenever I worked for a school, so it was a, we, we say it was a language school or like here in the Czech Republic, but both also in the UK, in London, I worked for two schools there. Um, so that's, that's not hard. Yeah. So you just need, okay. You need, I would say at least intermediate level to make it work with lower levels. It might be a bit more difficult. I guess it depends on the game itself, but mm -hmm. with most of the games, it's better if you are at least intermediate. You have to pick a good game, and then I guess you have to have some kind of aim and uh, think about the, what kind of language the students are going to use to communicate. And I think the more natural it is, the better. So, you know, there are some games that have been designed for English language teachers in order to practice that language. You can find those in the resource packs for English teachers, in the so-called teachers books. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about real authentic games. Those you can see behind me with real box games that would be played by uh, the native speakers of that language. Yeah. Not just yeah. like hangman or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think, you know what, like for an English learner to to read a book or to watch a film in English, it's it's a fantastic feeling to 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 do it right because it it gives you that sense of achievement. Um, doing it in that target language, it's always brilliant. Like I think almost everyone will remember the first book they have read in the target language in the language they are learning, and it's the same with the games. Like if you play that game, you realize you are not only speaking that language in those classes just with the teacher or other, your classmates, but you're actually playing a game. And you might even do it outside the classroom. So that's that's why I think there's a lot of potential in this idea. So it was more or less easy doing this in classes. But of course, then COVID happened. I left the UK and I I ventured out. I, I, I decided to go independent and uh, try to teach English through board games. Yeah. So, so COVID spurred that on? Yeah, but uh, it's not that simple to find... <laughs> enough students of the same level because it has always been kind of difficult for me to convince people that don't know me. I've, I can always convince people that know me that or that have already worked with me in some capacity. Some of my, I guess, listeners of my podcast that sort of trust me, know who I am, what I can do as a teacher. Mm -hmm. But selling this idea to completely new people, to strangers, it's a bit tough mm -hmm. because it doesn't give you that unique selling point, I guess. I guess a lot of people don't associate gaming with learning or they feel like they are wasting their time or that they might, I don't know, they might think that it's too niche or too, too extreme. I, I'm not selling anyone like magic English. Like you see on the internet, some of the adverts, like we hate, we hate it. Us, the qualified English teachers, we can't stand it. <laughs> what yeah. do you mean like learn it in two weeks or something? Learn the whole language in a few weeks. Speak like a native and all that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, that's not what I meant with that. This is just one way I created a course. There is a course that exists, but I've only run it twice mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone that joined it loved it, but it's always difficult for me to find the people for it. Uh, but what I want to say is that the idea of the course was not only to practice English, there is target language in it, but I wanted to sort of help those participants get into that hobby, you know, so, so discover this passion, like learn this new thing and do it in English because you can, once you, once you get the hang of it, you can start playing games with people at very decent level in English. And you would be surprised a lot of natives or if not natives, a lot of people who have super high level English, like Dutch people, Swedish, like people from these countries. Uh, there are so many people who love playing board games and there is one English teacher from Poland called Michael, like you, for oh, example. Yeah. I know he has name. always played Dungeons and Dragons with <laughs> English people and his English is amazing. Yeah, he's, he's excellent. Mm. So I have seen a lot of examples of this basically through yeah. this passion, because the thing is, it's so communicative, isn't it? Like once you really get into it, you have a group of people. It's like a social, social occasion, isn't it? And then you meet regularly. So you, you get that regular practice. It's all meaningful. It's not like at school when you do some stupid exercises, just task one, task two from the book and yeah? just mm -hmm. fill in the gaps or multiple choice. That's boring. This is exciting. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and people don't realize they're learning. I think that's the best way to learn is when it feels like what you would do anyway. It doesn't feel like you're studying. Yeah, exactly. I think I had a really good quote before. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like people don't buy products. Yeah. They buy personalities or mm. something like that. that. So like, yeah, maybe it's much easier for people to kind of get on board with this idea when they get to know you first and then they'll yeah. go to no, the idea. That, so that absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a good chance to mention if anyone listening is interested in, in this idea, they could go over to your podcast and your website and check it out. Yep. Which I'll link to in the show notes. So, you know, maybe, maybe you get a few more, a few more people, hopefully hope so. Thanks. <laughs> Well, we still have some time. I wanted to ask about a, a random topic today, but I thought this could be an interesting one for you. And I also made a note here that for the listeners, there might be some good examples of the present perfect tense. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it, but just answer naturally. But yeah, so for example, yeah, using like I have done something. And the topic I've got here is about memories and life experiences and stuff like that. So I've got a few questions here to probe you about your past, maybe if you're happy to uh, talk about them. <laughs> well, let's go. Let's go down the memory lane then. <laughs> yep, let's do it. So I wanted to ask you first about risk. So do you consider yourself to be a risk taker? Generally? Um, I would say not enough. Mm, mm. I'd like to be a bit more. You know, okay. I don't I don't find myself cowardly, but at the same time, I wouldn't call myself a daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you're somewhat in the middle, but it could be more. Yeah, maybe maybe it's similar to me. So what would you say is the riskiest thing you have ever done? I guess I, I've, I've, I've lived in the UK twice. Um, <laughs> so going abroad, it can be quite a daunting not going abroad, because if you go there, for holiday, that's different. But living in another country, having to relocate, it can be a daunting prospect for a lot of people. And it was for me, for sure. Um, so it always took me some time to make it to make that decision. Mm. But whenever I did, um, it always paid off. It, like I, I would never regret it later. So I've lived in the UK twice, once when I was in my early 20s, a long time ago. <laughs> and then again, right before COVID happened. So a year before that. Mm. Yeah, it, I think it is a big risk. I agree. It's like, it's scary. I guess it's scary. It's scary, it's scary. To do, isn't it? Um, would you say the risk paid off? For you? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sounds like it did. Yeah. And this is like a side question then. Were you kind of forced to go back because of COVID or did you, was it your choice to go back? It was always my choice, but um, the circumstances kind of pushed me to do it. So first of all, I knew the schools were about to get closed because you, mm. you, you probably remember it yourself. You're living in London yourself, aren't you? Uh, I moved here during COVID. So when yeah. the first lockdown happened, I had no home. I was in Airbnb, so I was kind of homeless. It was a bit scary, but yeah, that's another story. <laughs> so you see, I loved working in the UK. I worked. Can I mention the name of the school I worked for? Is yeah, that, is that it's allowed? up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. It's called Speak Up London. It's um, in Oxford Street, located in Oxford Street oh, in very London. Very central. Yeah, and I really enjoyed working there. Um, it, it was a fantastic, fantastic place to work, but you could feel it in the air that the schools were about to get close because <laughs> it all started kind of with Italy, right? Here in Europe, it got really bad there and, and it was inevitable that it would eventually come to England and everything would start getting closed and all that. And at the time I was actually struggling with accommodation because I don't know if you have this kind of experience, but living in London can be very expensive. And That's why I'm moving, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what you have to do as a teacher, if, if, if you want to get by, make ends meet, um, you, ha you have to live with someone. You can't live on your own. You have to sure. share a house. Um, and 
you always end up sharing a house with a group of strangers, um, which can get a bit tricky, to say the least. <laughs> so let's say I have been, uh, I was a bit unlucky in that regard. Uh, perhaps I wasn't experienced enough because as you see, the first time I did this was back in 2005. That felt completely different. Maybe mm. it's the age as well. Because I was more, more me, what's the word, malleable. Yeah? Malleable, yeah, yeah like, like yeah. open to change. Yeah, flexible. I was more open to change, more malleable, younger, you know, and, and I was able to handle everything more easily. And if there were some issues on the house, I wouldn't worry too much or, or I don't know. But now it's just, it's, it's much harder. That really influenced my decision to go back the most, I would say. I had also been kind of sick. I think I had had COVID before people even knew it was COVID. Before it was cool, yeah. <laughs> because I'd never been that sick ever before. Like okay. that was like the worst. And I, I hadn't had a GP in London. And, um, you know, at the time I was, I did sports on a daily basis. I felt like this healthy guy that just never gets really sick or anything. Or if, mm -hmm. if he does, then he will just uh, shake it off in a few days, you know, mm -hmm. I would go, yeah, go to work it. coughing and, <laughs> and um, sneezing and blowing my nose and no problem. Yeah. But something happened and it wasn't getting any better. Like I, I had fever for the whole week, like 37, 39 degrees. And my boss, um, at speak up London started to get worried. So she kind of forced me to, to visit, a, a, what's called a walking center, I believe. Yeah a walking center. So you don't have to be registered but with a the, GP the, and you can still get treatment. Yeah. But it might take longer. You may be waiting in the queue for a Tell me about it. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I had 39 degrees, uh, temperature oh. and I was there with, in a, I can remember it as it, as it was today, uh, with a, like, um, hefty jacket, like a massive jacket. And then they told me, what are you doing? You have, <laughs> you have a high temperature and because I was so cold. Like I had, I had, um, what, what do you call it? chills you had the chills yeah i had the chills and i so i was like cold feeling cold so i thought like oh if you're cold what you have to do you have to wear a jacket so i had mm -hmm. this massive jacket on me inside it was winter as well but it was inside so i don't know the room temperature was high mm -hmm. and they told me the doctor told me what on earth are you doing <laughs> so they gave me like three i don't know three paracetamols or something yeah and killers. uh instructed me to take off my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, some of these things you just get better with time, but yeah, may maybe, maybe you, you were, you know, patient zero or patient one or two. I don't know, but <laughs> you, you could have had it early on. Yeah. I, I avoided it for quite a while until this yeah. year. Um, yeah, it's not, not pleasant thing to get. And the thing um, is like, I don't know, it might not have been COVID because then one yeah. month later, that was like, a few days before, before I decided to leave, that was like the last straw that broke the camel's back for me, mm -hmm. because that was, I was sick again, not as seriously as, as before, but I was like, oh, not again. So because of that bad experience, I didn't go to work. And then I, I told my boss, I can't do this anymore. And then when I was at the airport going back home, um, I, there was, um, one of those du duty free shops. Yeah. Where they sell um fragrances and stuff like yeah, that without tax right yeah so i went in because i had some pounds to spare went in and i was like oh i haven't bought a fragrance for for ages let's do that and then there was a guy and i said which one would you like i said i don't care just and, and then he let me try it so he sprayed it on my wrist yeah and i was so i so i i, I tried to smell it <laughs> i was like this doesn't smell at all <laughs> what's what's wrong with it show me a different one and it was like oh, it, i can smell it so he showed me a different one it was exactly the same oh. that's when i realized i had covid <laughs> that sounds like covid yeah yeah that's yeah. so funny no, this is terrible terrible aftershave what is this <laughs> <laughs> well my other question if it's the same answer we can skip it that's fine but what accomplishment are you most proud of in your life yeah yeah it's it, you know what it's gonna be the same but i can put mm. a different spin on it let's say mm -hmm. yeah so obviously 
I'm 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 not a family man. I don't have a family or anything like that. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about my let's say professional success or professional accomplishments. What what have you? So obviously getting the degree, getting a degree, it's nice, yeah, and all that. But you know what? I guess the thing that I'm most proud of is that there came a point when I I had a, like a mind mindset shift. Yeah. That I realized that I can. I always knew. I was a decent teacher. I, I, I don't know. It sounds maybe arrogant, but so kind of um, you got over imposter syndrome. Is yes, that that's exactly what I want to say. I got over the imposter syndrome, and I realized that actually, hang on a minute, my students are telling me that I'm not a worse student than all those native speakers there. And when I realized that, that was really important because the thing is, I, I'd always, I'd always enjoyed working with international students the most. Yeah, so if you work with just Czech students here in the Czech Republic, yeah, you kind of expect it to be Czech. Like it's nothing, nothing unusual. Yeah, Czech teacher teaches Czech students often speaking Czech with them. But it's not that has never been my case. I don't ever speak. Uh, I don't ever use Czech in any of my lessons with any of my students, even if they are Czech. Yeah, so I, I have some principles that I sort of live by. Um, so. so um, when I realized that I can do this and I can do just as a good job as, as a native speaker, it was just this sort of watershed moment for me. And then, and then I became kind of competitive as well. So I noticed there is a lot of discrimination, obviously, of non-native teachers, but mm -hmm. I took the CELTA and the DELTA as well. I still haven't finished module three because I'm, uh, I'm lazy, but, uh, the, the assignment you have to, it's like, it reminds me of the master's thesis, so I don't, I don't want to. Okay. I haven't done Delta, but it just sounds like a, a big headache. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, but that, that really helped me because uh, the people that took the course, a lot of them were natives, so I could sort of compare myself with them. Yeah, you got all that feedback from your tutors and some of them failed the, the course. Uh, so that that was that that made me feel good. <laughs> not not that they <laughs> failed it, but the fact the fact that <laughs> the fact that I can do this, yeah. Exactly. The, the fact that if everyone yeah. passed, it it would yeah. mean your passing isn't special. Yeah. Yeah. I and understand. then what? And then the feedback I was getting from my students and from my employers, like everyone seemed happy with me, the way I teach, and nobody was complaining about my accent. Not even in the UK, which you, you obviously. Barely... I was gonna say you so, barely sorry. have an accent. Sorry to interrupt you, but well, I do you, you little sound bit. amazing. But... Oh, thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks. That's very flattering. But I, obviously, it's there at the back of your mind. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, there is a bit of that imposter syndrome. It's still there, somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess I got past it, more or less. Yeah. So that 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 would be something I'm I'm proud of. Yeah. That's such a good one. I love that. I really love that. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I think it's important to, to focus on those like wins in your career and your work yeah. and and let that kind of propel you forward in some way. I think for me, it might be it might be similar, like may, maybe just taking the step to start my own business, my own work, I think is a is a big sense of pride for me. It's not not necessarily what I've done since then. Mm -hmm. I think that the biggest part is just that first jump to yeah. employment to self employed. Maybe you had the similar feeling. Oh, it's super scary, Michael. <laughs> don't get me, don't get me get started on that. <laughs> it is scary, but would you agree it's worth it? <laughs> <laughs> What's this pause it's, for? It's definitely worth trying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You see, you see, you might be further down the road than me. That's the thing. Like, how long have you been self-employed? Uh, five or six years. Yeah. So me, more or less. One and a half years, let's say. Oh, okay. Oh, that's exciting. So it's still fairly early days for you. Yeah. So the thing is like, uh, let me connect it. Let me link it with the podcast, for example. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I've been doing the podcast for as long as I can remember for donkey's years. Yeah. But the thing is now it started, it starts feeling like a job. Now everything starts feeling like a job. Everything I do on my laptop oh, yeah, is a yeah, job. Yeah. Ev using my phone is a job. Checking my social media is a job. Everything is a job. So it's completely different. And it's, it's, it's a big change, you know, for an English teacher. And I, I, I'm not one of those people who, I know there's like 
pos let's be positive about everything. All those gurus and coaches who tell you how to how to be a successful English teacher working online. I am not one of those people. Like I can see all those negatives everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think people learn from them though, like sharing the negative side, people learn mm. from that just as much, if not more, don't they? So I think it's, it's good to focus on them and not just pretend everything is good. Yeah. But put, to put a positive swing on it, uh, it gives you that freedom. Yeah. It, it does, it does give you that freedom, which could be a bad thing too. Again, I'm back to, back to <laughs> negatives. Some people, they want, they want to be told what to, some people want to be told what to do. Yeah. Because let's say if you're not that organized, um, for example, what this did to me is that my sleeping patterns have been <laughs> changed complete. They're completely upside down now. So I'm a night owl. I go to bed in the middle of night. I go, I, I go running at, at midnight and then I'm still up for a few more hours. And then <laughs> I, in the morning, my morning is, is, it doesn't exist pretty much. <laughs> I wake up at midday. By morning? What's morning? Oh, oh yeah. the, the one hour before I go to bed till 1 a.m. is morning. Because <laughs> I can decide when I have my classes. I can decide when I mm -hmm. work. Well, I think it's important to be consistent. Like maybe you're a night owl, but it's the same hours, same open time every day, I, I would say. Mm, but more or yeah, less. We, we, we said before that we are totally opposite because I'm, I'm you know sleeping by 10 p.m. I'm up quite early. I finish most of my lessons in the morning. Mm. So I'm, I'm glad we could find a time to talk. It's kind of a compromise, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one there. It's a tough one. I, I feel like I'm quite organized. Like you, you mentioned before we started recording that I love structure. So like I, same time every day I wake up, same thing, very organized. But maybe if people are not that way naturally, it can be quite hard to do your own thing. Right? Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm more of an improviser. Yeah. <laughs> so like it's even the way I teach most of my lessons. I like the method called dogma. Mm -hmm. I'm a massive fan of that. I think it's a very natural way of using the language. And I think you can learn a lot from that and using that method. I know it's the, it's not the only way to teach and I have not always used it. Yeah. But I like to improvise. I like to wing things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wing it. Do it without planning. Yeah. Not always. Like there are times when I plan. So for example, that board games course I mentioned to you mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. that's a well-structured course. But at the yeah. same time, I am I have a soft spot for improvisation or for just, I don't know what to call it. I, f I, find, it, I find it very like authentic and creative and... It just, it suits my personality a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not all good. Yeah. I, I realize there are some like, um, downsides to it, of course. Hmm. Yeah. I was yeah. trying to remember that quote. I think about a lot about quotes, I suppose, but the tree that is too rigid will snap in the wind. You know, you've got to be flexible and kind of, yeah. if you have this rigid stuck plan for your lessons, it, it may not go well. You have to be flexible to go with the flow of the, the lesson, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Same Absolutely. with this podcast for it as well. I mean, yeah. I didn't get to all my questions, but that's fine because <laughs> we had a great conversation. So I had to be flexible. <laughs> yeah. It's always like that with me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's great. I, I loved what you've been saying. And maybe now's a good time to go over to our private podcast, the bonus podcast this week, where we can continue. I've got some other questions for you. Maybe we can talk a little bit about embarrassing things. We can talk about nostalgia, uh, talk a little bit about maybe some Czech phrases. We'll see what we get to. Well, maybe we can go back to the main podcast now. So main podcast listeners, we've just had our bonus one. Then we're coming back into this one again. So for those of you who did listen to the private one, hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, I guess before we do say goodbye today, maybe you could let us know where we can find out more about you, your website, anything you'd like to plug at this point. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. So my podcast is called Zdenek's English Podcast. And there will be one episode with Michael on it soon mm -hmm. as well. Uh, my website is teachersdenek.com. And then uh, you can find me or any social media um, like LinkedIn, Facebook as Teachers Zdenek or Zdenek Lucas. I'm on Instagram as well now. Um, yeah. 
Perfect. That's about that. Yeah, I will do my best to gather everything you just said. I'll put it in the show notes page on my website. So if people want to see the quick links, they can go there as well. Thanks. And you're, yeah. yeah, I have a Discord group as well. I'm, I'm quite big on Discord. I'm a massive Discord okay. fan. So I've never used doesn't... it, so I don't know what that means, but I will try to link that if I can. I'm quite, I'm quite surprised, Michael. You as a <laughs> gamer, you don't, you have never used Discord. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a platform that was originally made for gamers, and it has become really popular. And I feel like there's a lot of potential when it comes to language learning. So I've got a, just like you, I've got a lovely community, little English learning community, uh, which is like a su subscription based thing. And uh, it's full of motivated high level, uh, high level English learners. And we do social events and, and there are some group lessons and things like that. Yep. That's amazing. Nice. I'll look into Discord. But yeah, well, thank you for joining me. It's been so good to chat with you. I've really enjoyed hearing your, your insights and your everything, your story. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Michael. It was a pleasure. Pleasure to be here. You have been listening to the Level Up English podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.school forward slash podcast. That's levelupenglish.school slash podcast. And I'll answer your question on a future episode. Thanks for listening.